I invite you to stand and join together in the responsive call to worship. <coughs> Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who spoke in the beginning and created something out of nothing. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who took on the clothing of humanity to set those who were oppressed free. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one whose spirit rests continually upon us, calling us from sorrow-filled endings to bright new beginnings. Let us join together in our opening hymn, number 138.
prayer of confession. Triune God, God our, our Creator, Redeemer, Redeemer and Sustainer, you, the three in one, are worthy of praise, who fills our hearts with extraordinary joy, and who weeps with us when we lash out and hurt each other. In your infinite love, you care for us and teach us to love each other as you do. Instead, we too often use our feelings as a shortcut for manipulation, trying to get others to do what we want instead of listening for your guidance. Help us to change, to listen to each other, trusting in you and each other, to love again in vulnerability, knowing that all shall be well. Amen. The psalmist reminds us, happy are those whose help is in God, whose hope is in the Lord. Friends, God has heard our cry and has forgiven our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And let us greet one another with signs of peace. <laughs> peace be with you. <laughs>
And the second lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, beginning in verse 23. Listen for the word of God to you. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious, loving God, may it be thy word that is spoken and thy word that is heard and received in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you remember a time when stores were closed and sports events were not held on Sunday? I do. You had to plan in advance um, to finish all of your grocery shopping. You had to make sure you had enough gas in the car. There was no such thing as running to the store for a loaf of bread at the last minute. Um, things were closed on Sundays, and many states still do have some of these laws in place that limit the sale of alcohol on Sunday, or um, in Illinois, you can't race horses on Sunday. Um, in Texas, you can't buy a car, although I don't know why that would be considered recreational. <laughs> Um, all remnants of blue locks that uh, prevented entertainment or leisure activities on Sundays. That's what these are, these are all remnant of. The fourth commandment reads as follows. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. When I speak to older folk, especially those who were brought up in the South, um, many people re remember Sundays being reserved for all things church and spending many boring, long, brutal, joyless Sunday afternoons. Most of us think of the word Sabbath as the day we gather for worship. Um, be it Friday evenings for the Jewish folk or Sunday mornings for Christians. Sabbath, however, is not just a churchy word for Sunday. In the Bible, the Sabbath is held in such high esteem that practically all life revolved around it. So what exactly is Sabbath? And why is it so important that observing it is one of the Ten Commandments? The word Shabbat in Hebrew means to rest, to stop, or to cease. It doesn't mean resting as in taking a nap or going fishing or playing golf. It's not even about taking a vacation. What it means is a radical reorganizing of our priorities and our lives concerning our relationship with God and one another. And this prioritizing is something I don't think many of us are very good at. Think about what it takes 
for you to just stop. For me, it takes, mostly it takes getting sick. <laughs> this past December, when I got COVID a week before Christmas, I panicked. I had to completely reorganize my life and prioritize everything. Partially this was because I have a problem with wanting to control everything. Um, and when you get COVID or when you get sick or when you have to take a rest because you've had some sort of surgery that requires rest and recovery, you, you just have to stop. You realize that you are no longer in control. I'm the pastor. Christmas can't happen without me, right? Oh, but yes, it can. <laughs> Very harsh reality. True stopping in today's world, which is ruled by family and jobs and church and technology and all of our devices, um, makes it really hard to just cease. And in our society, the idea of stopping can even be disrespected. When my husband Rob was working as an architect right after we moved to Pasadena, um, his boss made him feel guilty because he wanted to get home in time to eat dinner with Claire and me. And he gave him a really, really hard time when he wanted to take one week of vacation that he had earned. Being made to feel guilty for wanting to eat dinner with your family at a reasonable hour or to take a vacation that has been earned was part of the reason why he quit that job and went back to work for the church. In Love Carved in Stone, Eugenia Gamble says the fourth word, commandment, serves as a hinge in the text of the Ten Commandments. The first three words have to do with our intimate relationship with God directly and personally. Worship one God, no idols, do not misuse God's name. And the final six words or commandments have to do with how we live our distinctive calling together as the beloved community of God. The fourth word, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, is about both of those things. It's about our relationship um, with God personally, and it's also about our relationship with God lived out in community. The Sabbath, we experience ourselves as God's beloved children while simultaneously experiencing how Sabbath holds us together as God's people. It's in this commandment that intimacy with God meets intimacy in community. Sabbath is not just for you, it is for us. This commandment is not just directed to each of us as individual people. It extends to everyone and every living thing around us. It says, you shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, or your slaves, your livestock, or the alien resident in your town. Translate, your children, your employees, any living creature, human or animal, um, anything that does work. This commandment has been called the great equalizer because it's a declaration that everyone, everyone in the realm of God has equal status. No one person's work is more valuable to God than another person's work. From the CEO of a large corporation to the person who collects your trash, everyone's work is equal in God's eyes. The truth is that God is the one who provides everything, and life is not about what we earn. Life is not just about what we do. 
not that what we do isn't important or it doesn't make any difference or matter, but when life becomes about only what we do, when we let our work define us, we can miss God. Life is not about what we earn. It's about what God gives. It's not about the person who dies with the best toys. Um, observing Sabbath reminds us that it is all about what God does and in the realm of God, all labor and all rest is valued equal. And it's not just about stopping work. It's also about acknowledging that there are other things from which we must regularly abstain. Worry, fear, resentment. What if for just one day, one day per week, we decide to remember that because God is God and we are not, and because God is not asleep at the wheel, but then we can lay aside our fears and our resentments and our worries. Or maybe it would be something like just stopping the desire to be perfect or the desire to always want to have more. What about taking a tax Sabbath? What about taking a break from texting and actually having a real conversation with somebody face to face? It's about the things we need to regularly let go of so that we can rest in the love of God and the provision of God. Sabbath is a gift. And in offering us this gift, God simply asks us to regularly and without fail to stop. Now I stand here preaching this word to you knowing that I struggle with this right along with everybody else. But the command to stop, to stop long enough to see life as a gift and to feel at peace with where we are right now. This isn't a forced rest um, that we endure with gritted teeth and discipline. It's the rest of remembering that we are not God and we don't have to kill ourselves trying to act as if we are. In keeping Sabbath, we declare that the world is already whole and that the brokenness of our experience has no ultimate claim on us. When we keep Sabbath, we make room for wonder. We acknowledge that God wants to care for us and provide for us. And when we keep Sabbath, we are to just stop and rest and heal. So God gives God's self to us and asks us to give ourselves to God. God asks us not to trivialize our relationship with God to take regular time to stop our wild doing and striving and to live into and out of our relationship with God into which we have been invited. Just stop. That's what God says. Just stop. I've got this. Just stop. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we are not good at stopping. We make every excuse in the world for not keeping Sabbath. We think it is about recreation, fail to realize it is about recreation. Help us, Lord, to find and commit to Sabbath season and begin to be the change we want to see in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
please join me in singing hymn number 272. confidence we ask you to accept our prayers we pray today for your creation you entrusted the earth to the human race and yet we disrupt its wholeness with violence and corrupt its purity with our greed prevent us from destroying what you have made and called good so that our children's children may inherit lands and seeds brimming with life and beauty we pray today for the people of the world. Preserve the people of every nation from tyrants. Heal them of disease, especially COVID and the pandemic that has afflicted people everywhere. Protect your people in disaster, war, and famine. 
We pray for Ukraine. Help all people, adults and children, to walk in ways that lead to peace. We pray for our city and neighborhood. Heal the rifts and fear caused by violence and racism in our streets and schools. Protect all of our city's children and give them lives of safety, hope, and joy. We pray today for our country. Give wisdom to those who govern us. Keep safe those who protect us from danger and form us as a nation where justice flows like life-giving water. We pray today for this church, strengthen its leaders, its ministers, deacons, elders, sustain them and give them the energy of your Holy Spirit so that they may give others new life and hope. Be close to those in our community who are sick or alone or vulnerable. We pray that we pray today for um, people everywhere who are in need. Oh God, give parents the grace to love their children abundantly. We pray for our students who are graduating this season. Fill them with hope and energy as they find their callings in the world. And may they go to the other side as they journey with you and serve you and your people with gladness to transform the world to look more like your kingdom. Eternal God, your love is stronger than death. We rejoice in the lives of those who have died in faith. Keep us in joyful communion with them until we join the saints of every nation gathered before your throne in ceaseless praise. We pray these things through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, the mystery of the Pentecost spirit in the name of the triune God. In the words that Christ taught us, we pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let us now receive our morning offering. There is a plate on the table at the back of the sanctuary, or if you are joining us online, um, there is a button at the top of our church website that may be used. Let us give thanks to God with our offerings.
of the one who stirs you to action. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. 